There was a level of political vitriol and division in this country that is unsustainable. On June 14, 2017, that hateful, rabid political environment manifested itself in one man and exploded on that baseball field. Yet, when the governor of Virginia, Terry McCullough, spoke at a press conference minutes after the story hit the news cycle, he didn't take this important opportunity to be a voice for unity. He didn't use this time to address the deep and festering hatred manufactured by the media that can drive a man to want to kill innocent people simply because they're a part of a different political party. No, the freaking governor of Virginia got up there to address the concerned citizens of this state and this country, and his only response? was background checks and gun show loopholes. We lose 93 million Americans a day to gun violence. I mean, I've long talked about this. Background checks, shutting down gun show loopholes. Think about that. At a time when this country is consumed with division and hatred, and when that disease manifests itself in an attempted assassination of members of Congress, this so-called leader has nothing better to offer than gun control. I wonder why. Why would he do this? He didn't know if this guy got the gun from a gun show. He didn't know if this guy passed a background check to get it, but he still brought it up out of nowhere. Why? Here's what I've come to realize. For anti-gun politicians, gun control is what you talk about when you don't want to talk about the truth. This man couldn't wait to push gun control. He even acknowledged the fact that this really isn't the time to be talking about it. But like an anti-gun agenda crackhead, he couldn't help himself and just started blurting out every can anti-gun talking point he had. He was so consumed with exploiting this tragedy, he couldn't even get his talking points straight. He said 93 million people die every day from gun violence. But like I said, gun control is what you talk about when you don't want to talk about the truth. So let's talk about the truth behind these 93 million people. The actual number is 93 people a day die from the use of a gun. But over 60% of those deaths are suicides. And let's not act like he doesn't know how much of the rest of that number is criminals killing other criminals in our inner cities. And because the term violence is a statement of action, not legality, this number also includes justified self-defense and justified police shootings, much like the officers who shot this guy in the first place. But I'm not done, because there's even more truth that Terry McCullough and his anti-gun goo troop don't want to talk about. If guns are the real issue regarding suicides, shouldn't we have the highest suicide rate in the world? We should, but we don't, not even close. You have places like Japan where you can't even own a gun and they have a higher rate of suicide than we do. I also wonder how many of our suicides are comprised of the men and women who fought for this country only to come back and be neglected and treated like throwaways by the very country they were fighting for. But that's more truth no one wants to talk about. So instead, we get gun control. As for inner city violence, if guns are the reason for the violence in the inner city, shouldn't the guns in American suburbs be the reason for their violence? Problem is, they don't have the same level of violence. Could the truth be we neglect the inner cities and leave them the rotten economic disparity only to use the dead bodies to help boost our let's scare all the soccer moms into joining our anti-gun group with overinflated gun violence numbers political routine? Democrat Terry McAuliffe crying for more gun control after every tragedy involving a gun doesn't surprise me because most of the inner cities have been under democratic rule for decades now and their only response to inner city violence has always been let's add some more gun control and in case you want an example of how well that strategy works i direct you to Southside chicago where the violence is through the roof but they have some of the strictest gun control laws in america this is a place where just a few years ago you couldn't even own a gun in your own home the truth is the fact that a group like every town would even think to include self-defense shootings and justified police shootings in this statistic, and to have Terry McAuliffe use it to push an agenda on a day where we should be talking about the troubling political dynamic of this country, this should tell you everything you need to know about their integrity. Gun control is what they talk about when they don't want to talk about the truth. Why are we still talking about background checks? We have background checks. As a matter of fact, a reporter trying to prove we don't have background checks by trying to buy a gun realized he couldn't buy one because he failed the background check. Like, come on, let's just talk about the truth. You're not worried about background checks. We already have them. You want to create a national gun registration. Oh, but you can't say that because that would be unpopular. So you say background checks. It's safer and doesn't tell the whole story because what you really mean is you want to require background checks for people who sell or give their guns to family members or friends. But let's talk about some more truth about this special background check. Let's talk about how the only way to enforce this type of system is to do like they did in Australia and require a national gun registration. 
Of course, after they did that, they changed their mind and said, ha, only kidding, we need you to turn them all in. And if you don't, we'll use our new national registry to come and get you and your guns. But no, you go on TV after a lunatic shoots a congressman over politics and say, we just want common sense solutions like background checks and closing gun show loopholes. Crazy thing is, no one expected this guy to be a Trump-hating Bernie Sanders supporter, largely because for years, they've been coloring gun owners as right-wing fanatics itching to kill. Yet, here we have a guy who likely would have voted for Terry McCullough. But none of this matters, because whether this guy was a staunch Republican, bleeding heart Democrat, or a libertarian, this country is bursting at the seams with political discord and division. And instead of trying to find our political commonalities and making this country stronger, we're talking about gun control, because so-called leaders like Terry McCullough don't want to talk about the truth. You guys are a bunch of frauds. What's going on, folks? This is Coleon Noir. If you like what you saw in this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button that should be located on the bottom left portion of the screen. I mean, come on, who are you fooling? I know you want to.